start. Conquered. I'm tired. They beat me. Oh, they beat it back. This is... Now this is out. That should be easier. Alright. Now, while we're removing the deck beams uh, from the aft end and We'll leave uh, the rudder because it's providing some structural rigidity, but this is so rotten uh, that we can't, it's not safe to walk on. I pried against this one to get the, the deck boards up and it simply fell. The deck was holding up the deck beam. So we're going to take all this out, put some cleats across the back, continue the ramp and hopefully be safe while we continue to deconstruct the boat. See, it's just pushing down into that. It's just... Yeah, this is nice yellow cedar. Seven eighths thick. It's yeah. It's I'm sad to break it up. Smells good. All right, smells fresh. I have music on. <laughs> I'm cutting this. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Trying to. Thanks, Anderson. What else can I strip? Ah, uh, that's clear, that's clear.
removing the portholes uh, before we remove the planking. Uh, we want to save these and reuse them. And uh, once this is finished, then we can proceed to take off the shear plank and the carbon board. That'll give us a better look at the frame ends. Taking out a little bit of this ceiling up here. I want to try to screw something from here to here. Right now, the only thing sort of keeping this forward edge in position is the hose pipe and all the rotten wood around it. So I'm going to screw something across here just to sort of keep this thing in position. This right here is a plank at the turn of our bilge, which I have marked out for extraction. We've clearly got deteriorated frame heads. It looks like 100% at the top, and it's a bit soon to tell how many are at the bottom. I'd like to get it pressure washed first. We need to pull this plank off so we can see what those frames look like mid-span. There is a chance we're gonna be removing all these planks at some point, uh, but we don't know that for sure yet. It's sort of gonna depend on how many frames need replacing. The uh, port side of the boat seems to be in a little bit better shape, but we also want to get access to the tops of our frame heads. So it means we'll be removing the upper shear plank where the break in the deck is, uh, as well as the covering board. I think what our current plan is, is to remove a section of all the planking in the bow. Uh, on the starboard side and we will reframe that small section, probably three or four frames, and then we'll go and do the same thing on the port side. Simultaneously, we will be doing the same thing at the aft end of the boat. Once we've got our covering boards off, we'll be able to see what all our, our deck beam ends look like. From what we can tell, all the ends are pretty shot. And it's probably more work to replace the end of a deck beam than it is to just replace the whole thing. Uh, for now, it's bite-sized pieces that we remove until we are convinced about a plan of action. In the last episodes, the last two, we've talked about, first of all, uh, worms. These things can eat the boat from the outside. We talked about uh, rot, dry rot, and uh, the attacks from fungus. You know, two of the, you know, really serious considerations. But the third one that we're going to address today is the question of uh, corrosion. So several different types of corrosion uh, and uh, you know, people don't realize how serious a problem corrosion can be in a wooden boat. Primarily because salt water, especially when you have wood soaked with salt water, is an excellent conductor. And so if you have two dissimilar metals close together and they're both attached to the wood of underwater in the boat, they're electrically connected together. So this can cause 
big problems, mostly with the deterioration of the wood, but it can also come, as you can see from this example here, deterioration of the fastenings. I mean, look, there's just nothing left of these fastenings whatsoever. And the iron itself, or steel, whatever it looks, it's pretty old stuff, but you can see how it itself has been corroded by direct interaction with the wood. So, you know, the, the wood is there, it's sitting on the steel, and you can see the grain of the wood in the corrosion of the steel. So there's a direct interaction. You've got an organic material and, uh, you know, a highly reactive solvent, salt water, and dissimilar metals. I mean, it's, it adds up to trouble. What's commonly talked about as galvanic corrosion or electrolysis needs to be straightened out that there's really two different kinds of galvanic action. Galvanic action refers to corrosion or interaction between dissimilar metals in an electrolyte. So salt water is a conductor, so it's an electrolyte. So if you have dissimilar metals and an electrolyte, you will have galvanic action in the absence of any outside electrical current. They will create this electrical current between themselves. So say you have a bronze, a shaft log or something like this, it's normally bolted to the outside of the boat. And then you have near it a uh, zinc anode, which you think is protecting your boat. Well, <laughs> it's not actually. Electrons travel from the zinc to the bronze where they react with hydroxide ions and form sodium hydroxide. Uh, this starts to break down the wood around not only the shaft log itself, but if there are bronze fastenings, it's dissolving the wood around the fastenings. And people find that sometimes these, you know, you take the rudder out and the shaft log or the rudder post will just fall right out of the boat. The fastenings are just completely gone. Here's an example where the wood itself has been carried, uh, dissolved away by the fastener. So the outside surface of cellulose has, has been left, but inside these cells, there's just, there's just n pulp. It's just, there's nothing left. Uh, the sodium hydroxide has dissolved the inside of the cell away uh, to just leave nothing at all. The main way you can see it, white powder forming around the fastening at the surface, you know, where it goes into the wood. And the easy way to deal with it, it's a base. So you add some weak acid like vinegar and it will neutralize, it will neutralize the sodium hydroxide. So that's galvanic action in the absence of an electrical current. If you have an electrical current, also a stray current, say from a battery, which is grounded incorrectly, or you've got induced current from high voltage alternating current on the dock, then this is greatly increasing the amount of galvanic action. And it can cause galvanic action or electrolysis with only one metal. You don't need two metals if you have an electric current. The third kind is what's called crevice corrosion. So in crevice corrosion, you have a similar kind of action in the sense that it's similar to crevice corrosion even in uh, stainless. Say you have a stainless steel fastening into a piece of wood, as you go down the side of the fastening, uh, there's an electric differential from the top of the fastening to the bottom, sometimes as much as a half of a volt from the one end of the fastener to the other. And so this causes galvanic action along the side of the fastener. So this can cause this kind of corrosion where you see the fastener is just completely wasted away. There's almost nothing left of it. So how can you expect this to hold anything? or it dissolves the wood around it. And this may, in fact, you know, the wood was gone, the fastener was gone, there's just, there's just nothing left. People think when you plug holes in a wooden boat, you drill a full hole, put a fastening in, you know, a nice countersunk hole, and you put a plug in this to make it all look nice and everything. No, no, it's to stop crevice corrosion. <laughs> this absolutely has to be plugged or you will have crevice corrosion. Depends on the alloy of the material. Stainless, very bad. Lots of stainless, I mean, if it's really good, pure 316, fine, it's probably okay. Not gonna cause any real damage. But lots of other 304, uh, 308, other stainless, just completely unsuitable for use underwater in wood. Uh, crevice corrosion will destroy these fastenings in a very short period of time, much shorter than you would think. How do you avoid this? Avoid dissimilar metals, especially underwater. If you have copper fastenings and galvanized fastenings near one another, you're just asking for trouble. Don't use stainless steel fastenings underwater. Plug all fastening holes underwater. Look for white powder. Use vinegar to neutralize the uh, sodium hydroxide. Use the minimum amount of sacrificial zinc. Don't believe that just adding more zinc is gonna solve any problem, it's not. It's just gonna add to the problems at any bronze that's exposed underwater. If you're using bronze, silicon bronze, 
or manganese bronze if you can get it. This is very difficult. Putting fastening fixtures to the boat, they need to be bedded properly. Minimize the contact area. You can see what happens when you have a large contact area between wood and the iron and it's unprotected. I mean, both the iron and the wood are attacked. This is a complicated subject. And it's a subject that every wooden boat owner needs to make himself familiar with. Oh, it's heavy. I'm not built for this. I'm like the skinniest person here. <laughs> About to pull the stump of the mast out. It was uh, rotten right through at deck level when they pulled it out, it just separated. Lower section seems pretty intact. It's pretty tight in the hole, but uh, we're gonna wrestle it out. Let's see if we can find anything inside. Looks like we've got a surprise in there. What do we got? Something? I need a tool for it. Get that out. Oh yeah. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. Victoria, BC, Canada. Probably don't need to yell, hey? Okay? We've got a date on there. It's Victoria, BC, City of Gardens. See a date on there. Is my eyes getting that bad? But looks like silver. All clear, starboard forward. Dropping. thinking about removing the rudder. Don, of course, if you want to remove this shaft, it's a bit in the way. So the thing, we don't have clearance down to put everything down. We can, we're not gonna dig in this. We're gonna get trouble through the marina. Uh, so we're thinking about cutting the top as long as we can. So it means this distance on the top and slide it up, slide it down. Like this, we don't have to destroy it and we can keep it as it is. A little bit of TLC, it still seems so. <laughs> Two pieces of uh, bronze held together with this coupling and this has to come off so we can drop the rudder.